welcome to our special report. This week we are on the northwestern coast of Gujarat, which is the country's most sensitive and the most vulnerable coastline. But across the country, India's coasts are manned and secured by the fourth armed force of the country, and that's the Indian Coast Guards. Over the next 30 minutes, let's take a look at the challenges faced by these sea warriors. <laughs> Twenty-six eleven, year 2008, 10 Pakistani terrorists came undetected by sea to unleash mayhem in country's commercial capital Mumbai, leaving 166 dead. Country's vulnerability to a seaborne terror strike came to the fore after this episode. These gory images which exposed chinks in coastal security's armour impelled the government to expedite measures to improve both physical and electronic surveillance along the country's 7,516 kilometre long coastline spread across nine states and four union territories. The government of India also has increased uh, strength of Coast Guard in terms of manpower and assets and uh, the Coast Guard is in the process of acquiring these assets. Raja Sabha TV crew travelled to the northwestern coast of Gujarat to find out under what circumstances the fourth armed force of the country, that's the Indian Coast Guards, operate. Indian Coast Guard is a multi-mission organization conducting round-the-year real-life operations at sea. Despite being relatively small, it has a wide range of task capabilities for both surface and air operations. Service in Coast Guard is not merely an employment as life for Coast Guards is engaging, adventurous and challenging. To get a slice of the life on board sea, we packed our bags from Porbandar Jetty to get a feel of the Coast Guard operations. So now we've embarked the Indian Coast Guard ship ICGS Samrat where we are going to sail with the Indian Coast Guard officers for the next two days. Indian Coast Guard was established on August 18, 1978 as an armed force like BSF, ITBP and CISF under the Coast Guard Act. Operating under the Defence Ministry, Coast Guard works in close cooperation with the Indian Navy, Department of Fisheries, Customs, Revenue, Central and State Police Forces. Primarily, the intention of the of forming the Coast Guard was that uh, the the uh, those roles for which the Navy was considered too too much uh, was were being given to the Coast Guard, particularly in terms of search and rescue, the offshore oil exploration, the uh, coastal security, and those kind of things. Indian Coast Guard's motto, Vayam Rakshama, in Sanskrit means "We protect." And in tune with their motto, even we sailed across, coming face to face with one Coast Guard operation after another. Law enforcement in the territorial waters is a big challenge faced by the Coast Guard. For example, look at the suspicious boat in the middle of the sea. Coast Guard ship Samarat has spotted this vessel, but how? This man, technically called the lookout, is the first point of contact in any visual sighting at the sea. 
He mans a telescope which charts out the coordinates of a suspicious object which could be a vessel, a dhow or even a chopper sometimes. He then passes on this information from this particular place of the ship to the inside cabin which is called the bridge. Once this man gives the information about this suspicious vessel, the captain commands the fast interceptor boats to cordon it off and check the whereabouts. Men in this small Gemini boat wait their way to get onto the suspicious vessel, only to find out that the vessel was carrying illegal arms and weapons which could have been used for harming the interests. Unlike other jobs, we don't have a 9 to 5 job. Our job when we are at sea, it is a 24-7 hour uh, duty and we can be called anytime and we are available at our duty post anytime. So the biggest challenge is to maintain that highest level of alertness and efficiency of the unit while we are undertaking operations. behind me is a vessel which has caught fire in the middle of the sea and the Coast Guard is trying to extinguish the fire with its external firefighting system and also rescue the lives of the people on the vessel. After each operation gets over, Coast Guard does not rest but the journey goes on and ship continues to sail to keep up a 24 by 7 surveillance of the sea waters. By the next morning, our ship touched upon the most coveted and the most sensitive region in the Gulf of Kutch in the Arabian Sea. The structure which you see behind me are the two offshore oil rigs belonging to ONGC. Coast Guard has been given the mandate by the Government of India for the safety and protection of these oil rigs. Around every oil rig you'll find a prohibited zone which extends to about 500 meters where no vessel can enter. But the Coast Guard can enter this prohibited zone to establish communication with the oil rig staff and also to check whether any trespassing has happened. The 27th July 2005 refreshes the memory of the Bombay High accident where a supply ship collided with a gas pipeline resulting in an explosive fire which destroyed the production platform accounting for 110,000 barrels per day of India's oil production. 22 people died despite rescue measures taken by the Indian Coast Guard. Safety and security of such offshore installations is an important task cut out for Coast Guard where Jawans on their normal patrol take rounds of these installations to find out if all is well. There is just no scope for any error as these are vital installations. This orange structure which you see behind me is actually known as the single point mooring which is a fixed unit in the middle of the sea to which all the ships coming from far and wide, they can anchor themselves and they can load and unload the crude oil from this place. A little further on this northwestern coast after crossing the oil rigs is the International Maritime Boundary Line, where begins the most difficult and the most challenging task for the Coast Guards. We are now inching closer towards the International Maritime Boundary Line. You can see there is no delineation, no clear demarcation of the boundary. And this is what exacerbates the issue. India's maritime boundary with Pakistan is a contentious issue because of the overlapping claims. It not only poses serious security challenges, but also hinders offshore development. All these fishing boats dotting the international waters knowingly and many times unknowingly cross the International Maritime Boundary Line, which is also known as IMBL. No GPS, no radar. All these fishing boats depend on is the announcement from the Coast Guard. Pakistan 
Coast guards try and shepherd the boats into the Indian territory, but many times the errant boats take the situation for granted as they know coast guards will come at their rescue. According to the fisheries law, all these fishing boats which you see have to follow a colour scheme which means that they have to be painted in a particular colour. Their registration numbers need to be painted but all that is missing. So clearly the fishermen are flouting the rules. But what does the Coast Guard do? Their boarding party goes, they confiscate and seizes the licences of the fishermen and give it back to the fisheries department. But the biggest irony is that the fishermen go back and get their licences revoked in most of the cases. Many times coast guards, after giving warnings to the fishing boats, also cancel the licenses. But after approaching the fisheries department, fisher folks who are politically well connected get their licenses revoked. Even though there is a clear demarcation of the maritime boundary between India and Sri Lanka, the situation on the ground has not changed because the fishermen continue to fish in each other's territorial seas and also in the exclusive economic zone, which often results in the arrest of the fishermen and in extreme cases even results in the deaths of fishermen at the hands of the Sri Lankan Navy. Welcome back, you're watching our special report on Indian Coast Guards. Nighttime surveillance is the hardest to track. When the Coast Guard ship confronts a suspicious object, it has to tread extra caution. Fireballs are generally used to illuminate the area of suspicious activity so that firing can be appropriately aimed where there is no scope for any error. Safety of man is paramount and no firing incidents towards any innocent and re regular maintenance of the weapon in harbors. Preservation and protection of marine ecology and environment including pollution control is a major job assigned to the Coast Guards exclusively. This rubberized barrier which you see is actually the oil spill containment process. What Coast Guard along with companies like SR or Reliance have done is that they have contained the oil from spilling to other parts of the sea. And this is where Coast Guard plays a vital role. After identifying the oil spill area, biggest challenge is to prevent the oil spreading to other parts. That's when Coast Guard ships or even Donier aircraft spray anti-pollutants to break up oil into tiny particles. The quantity of oil being transported here is massive and though all the precautions are being taken by the companies, still there is a probability or there can be accidental leakage of the oil for which we are totally equipped. On day three, it's time for us to disembark the ship and go towards the narrow and shallow areas. This hovercraft which you see behind me is actually an amphibious vessel which runs on land as well as water. Coast Guard uses this vessel while chasing someone from land towards sea or from sea towards land. It also comes in handy when you're wading across areas which are narrow and shallow. We sailed in the hovercraft to see how Coast Guards function in creek areas when it comes to chasing miscreants operating in the shallow waters. Right now I am at the Sir Creek area which is the point of contention between India and Pakistan. The issue is still not settled but coastal security remains high on India's agenda. Coast Guards enter this creek area almost every day to check whether any infiltration has taken place or not.
time for a short break. Don't go away. We'll come back with plenty more on Indian Coast Guards on the other side. Back in a moment. For the young Coast Guard recruits, life is full of challenges. Courage and grit is something which has to be inbuilt, but the only thing they dread is the monsoon season, as that's a time when seasickness does not allow the sailors to give their 100%. This is a adventurous, it's tough. You will get to see new things. अलग अलग एटमॉस्फेयर में रहना मिलेगा तो टफ नहीं बोल सकते इसको मानसून सीजन में क्या होता है सी का स्टेट अभी नॉर्मल है सी का स्टेट जब हार्ड हो जाता है जब वॉमटिंग्स बंदे का रेस्टलेसनेस जस्ट लाइक दैट रेस्टलेसनेस आता है कुछ टाइम को थोड़ा फील हुआ है बट टू थ्री डेज रिकॉर्ड ओके कभी कभी तो फील होता है बट ये एडवेंचर है Weather becomes the biggest game changer for any Coast Guard operation. The sea which you see behind me is glassy, the weather is stunning, so the operations have been successful. But if the weather was rough, the waters would have been choppy, the same Coast Guard operation could have been chaotic and replete with many more difficulties. The fourth armed force of the country is an organization more than three decades old but is suffering from inherent inadequacies and shortcomings in the coastal mechanism due to which many times these young sailors feel disenchanted and demotivated. The state governments in many coastal states have a lackadaisical attitude towards Indian coast guards consequently not according priority to the coastal guards. For instance, in West Bengal, the construction of the coastal police stations under phase 2 has been delayed because the land identified for this purpose has still not been transferred to the state home department. But in many instances where the coastal police stations have been established, the state government has not been able to provide adequate manpower and fuel for the petrol vessels, citing inadequate funds. Coast Guard imparts training to the Marine Police and Seamanship which includes sea patrolling, combat operations, handling of interceptor boats, offshore vessels and sophisticated weapons. But absence of trained personnel and shortage of manpower is an all-pervasive problem. According to a 2013 Defence Ministry report, the force is short of 514 officers, 2,262 enrolled personnel and 585 civilian staff. Shortfalls in respect to some vessels ranged from 9% to 100%. Our manpower proposals are working in, are being put up to the government in tandem with the, with the infrastructure growth and the asset acquisition. So what is actually happening is that for every ship which we acquire or every station which we, are, which we commission, uh, we need to have manpower for that. So we put up our case for manpower. Ministry of Defence in one of its reports to secure the maritime interests of the country has stated that Coast Guard requires about 150 ships and boats and about 100 aircrafts to secure the coast and the maritime interests of the country. It is anticipated that this force level would be achieved by the year 2018. The CAG report also showcased the percentage shortfall in undertaking refits ranged from 48 to 88 percent. All agencies involved in coastal security are greatly constrained by the lack of adequate infrastructure in the form of office buildings, weapons, boats and vessels. Across the country's coastline, Coast Guard has just 23 interceptor boats, 6 hovercrafts, 1 pollution control vessel, 28 Dornier aircrafts, 19 helicopters, besides a few more resources at hand. Experts say for foolproof security, this is not enough.
first batch of Coast Guard officers was inducted in 1981, but no cadre review has ever been undertaken. Main reason being, Coast Guard being the youngest service, formed only in 1978. The impetus for the present cadre review exercise has been provided by the Ministry of Defence, keeping in mind all factors like functional requirements, organisational objectives, training, manpower, planning, recruitment needs, stagnation at various levels and financial implications. Yeah, that is something which the Defence Ministry has to uh, carry out the cadre review at periodic intervals. But uh, the importance that the Coast Guard has is very well recognized. And uh, whatever is, uh, I think the 7th Pay Commission is really going to be the place where people have to give their representations and their memorandum to, you know, better their own uh, salary scales and uh, all the perks. We have already got a proposal which now needs to go to the Ministry of Defence. Uh, we've also got a post of additional Director General uh, for the Western Seaboard, uh, also approved by the Government of India and sh uh, shortly we will be undertaking the selection process. Uh, every service as it grows, there is a need for cadre review from time to time. Our papers are more or less ready. I am scrutinizing them okay. and hopefully uh, in about a month or so, we should be in a position to send it across to the Ministry of Defence. Low pay structure has also discouraged people to join Coast Guard services. Though schemes to recruit retired naval and Coast Guard personnel have been implemented to overcome manpower deficiency, they have not been very successful. See, the service conditions, the rules are different and because of that there will be certain amount of differences, no doubts about it. Uh, the armed forces are also entitled for military service pay which is not there at the moment with the Coast Guard. We are trying to bring in parity but then that again will depend upon under what uh, nomenclature, under what structure this service has been created. No, basically the Co Coast Guard people, uh, they have uh, different pay scales. But those that come from the Navy on deputation, they of course their salaries are protected. But uh, otherwise, uh, uh, the perks are more or less uh, on the line which the Navy gets. The most often grouse amongst the personnel is that Navy is given more precedence over Coast Guards in top rank posts. Coast Guard heads generally belong to Navy and promotion of officers from parent cadre, that is ICG, is limited to the post of additional Deputy Director General only. The Coast Guard officers are equally capable and they have proved their mettle and they have been in the Coast Guard, so where is the, uh, where is the debate as such? I think they can take over as Director General, it's not an issue at, at all. Now, promotions in the military and in any armed force are also very hierarchical. At every rank, you know, you can have, at the top ranks, the promotion is as low as 1%. Maybe at the mid-level, it is between 10 to 14%. Whereas in the civilian side, as they say, once you join, you can be rest assured that you will get the highest pay grade that you are entitled to in that particular whole cadre. Budget of the Coast Guard has been increased to 36% from 2031 crore to 2771 crore, but challenges still remain as far as implementation is concerned. Our country sleeps peacefully because our coastlines are guarded by these young men. Come hail, come storm, life for them goes on forever. Truly standing by their motto, we protect. That's all we could pack up in this half hour from our entire team, which includes my camera persons Manoj and Rajdeep. Goodbye and thanks for watching. Vayam Raksham Vayam Raksham Vayam